Hi, I'm Christine Hulquist. I was the Democratic candidate for governor in Vermont in this uh, 2018 cycle, uh, and you're watching Mr. Media. Derek Hallquist grew up the son of a man who believed fervently in the importance of modernizing and protecting America's energy grid. As a child and teen, Derek followed his dad to energy-producing plants, learning about turbines, kilowatt hours, and renewable sources of energy, a particular obsession of his father, David's. They even lived in a house uh, adjacent to a hydroelectric dam. When Derek became a filmmaker, he began a passion project documenting his father's commitment to clean energy and educating his fellow Vermonters about America's power grid. And that was interesting, sure. But at some point in the process, David Hallquist decided he could no longer keep his greatest secret. In his heart of hearts, David Hallquist was a woman, Christine Hallquist. Now, it's not as unusual today to learn that someone we thought we knew as a straight man such as the former Olympic decathlon ch champion Bruce Jenner, or as a straight woman, is actually gay or lesbian or bisexual or even transgender. Today, Christine Hallquist is a trans woman, but unlike most people who transition in private, Christine's life-changing moments were captured by her son in a rapidly changing documentary that Derek has titled Denial. Search your memory. The name Christine Hallquist might ring a bell because on November 6, 2018, she was a Democratic Party nominee for governor of Vermont. And while she didn't win, she broke many barriers in the process and attracted nearly 40 percent, that's right, nearly 40 percent of the total vote against a popular, a still popular, <laughs> Republican incumbent. Uh, not a lot of popular incumbents from the Republican Party this year. Anyway, <laughs> we've got a lot to talk about. Christine Hallquist, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. I'm delighted to meet you. Um, and my head was spinning uh, while I was watching Denial. So much happened in your life over the last few years, much of it captured on film by your own son. How do you put it all in perspective so that your own head doesn't explode? Well, you know, I, I always believe in living in the moment. You know, if, I always, if you live in the past, I find you're depressed. If you live in the future, you're anxious. So it's get up every day and and make the most of every minute is kind of what I my approach is. So I don't think too much about uh, the difficulties or the challenges. It's uh, it's just another day. And I'm I'm guessing that for you it was life unfolding day to day over a period of I don't know five maybe six years. For us, it's contained in a two hour and some uh, film. So it all seems to happen very rapidly. Is that fair to say? Yes. I, in fact, when I saw the film the first time, it was actually I had to see it about 10 times because it was it was so hard to watch. Uh, because, again, if you live your life day to day and minute by minute, you know, you don't realize the challenges you're facing on a long term basis. So I could see in the film, you know, kind of the, the you could see in my eyes the difficulty I was struggling with. Oh, yeah. And the the thing is, you know, sometimes I'll preview a documentary before doing an interview and I might, I might have it to my left, and I keep going back and checking on it. Um, this denial really demands your attention because so many things happen. And several times I know I had to back it up because I thought, wait, what? what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I don't say that in any sense of being – it's not disturbing. I know there's people who are uncomfortable with these subjects and these types of things. It was just – stunning the things that were happening in your life. And, and, and so people know the movie takes place before you ran for governor of Vermont. I mean, it's just, it's something. Um, so let, let's start from a simple place. Um, what were you expecting when Derek uh, originally approached you about making a documentary about you and the energy grid? It's a very, that was a very different film than where it finished. Well, I was thinking, first of all, that, Wow, this is going to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I was thinking, how do you how do you take you know these really mundane and and uh, challenging technical difficulties and make them interesting? Uh, of course, you know at the time I was not thinking of transitioning at all. Uh, but 
but I suppose that spiced the movie up a little bit. <laughs> it may have added something to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you were concerned that it might not be the sexiest film just being about the energy grid. Yes. And, and of course, uh, being my son, of course, you do everything, at least the way I look at it, you do everything for your children. So I'm like, OK, yeah, you could I'll, I'll be glad to do whatever you want, Derek, you know, put the mic on and follow me around and. I'll take you to this, you know, place in St. Martin Lake, Texas, and show you that. So in the beginning, it was like, you know, I was I was definitely um, supporting him, mm -hmm. but I, I I definitely could, of course, either one of us could see where the film was going to go, but but I definitely didn't know where what it, what was going to happen with it. Well, and and I should tell people that uh, this is how serious uh, uh, Derek took the film. He followed you into a meeting in uh, in D.C. with uh, Bernie Sanders at one point, who's <laughs> Vermont's uh, senator. And then I have to admit, I can't remember the other senator who you went into a meeting with. And then he said, uh, turn off the film. Yeah, it was Pat Leahy, Pat Leahy, who I have a lot of respect for. Yeah. yeah. OK, I, I just uh, the Pennsylvania senator. I just couldn't remember uh, who it was off the top of my head. So, I mean, this Derek was taking it seriously. Derek obviously thought. He obviously inherited from you this fascination with the grid and with, uh, you know, America's energy future. And, yeah, I respect that a lot because, you know, he 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 was taking in something that was very important uh, to his parent. Yeah. And I, I, and I you know, I am, of course, uh, very fascinated with the grid personally. Um, I but I you know, when you work with it every day, you, you just can't see how anybody else would be as fascinated as I was. But, of course, you know, the grid is. It's one of the most complex, you know, the complex piece of work that I think humankind has ever done. Forgive the bias, but, <laughs> but you know, it it's it certainly uh, from a physics standpoint, it's it's what's called a highly un unstable system, and which makes it quite fascinating from a from a science standpoint. Well, and and so people understand uh, at the time that he was making the film, you were the CEO of the Vermont Electric Co-op, correct? That's correct. Yes, it's right. said. Vermont's second largest utility. And I really kind of took the job uh, back in 2005 after uh, going to Quebec and and listening to the report of the Intergovernmental Climate Change Commission uh, report on what carbon was doing to the planet. And I really knew that the electric grid, and I still, to this day, I'm going to be passionately committed to using the electric grid to solve climate change. Hmm. Now, I wanted to check one other thing. Um, years ago, uh, my wife and I would spend a lot of time in Vermont. Uh, in Manchester Center and Bennington, up in uh, Montpelier. Uh, other, uh, there's a ski resort up to the to the east of Mont. Well, anyway, yes, Stowe uh, maybe Stowe. Yeah, up, exactly uh, up yeah. in Stowe. So, I, but I, I didn't actually get a complete sense from the film where geographically uh, did you did do you, did you or do you live in Vermont? What part of the state were we talking about? That was the only thing I wasn't really clear on. Well, we're we're right on the edge of what's called the Northeast Kingdom. We're at, we're in the northeastern part of Vermont. We're actually about twenty minutes east of Stowe area. Oh, okay. All right. So just to, to help place people place where where that was taking place. Um, all right. So there comes a point in the movie where Derek has he's been shooting, and and we can see little bits of uh, 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 parent son uh, antagonism at points where. He's getting a little frustrated with you at times. This is before the transition, but so we know that it's not everything is not all hunky dory, even when things were the way they had been for decades with the two of you. At one point, uh, Derek goes out of town and he he flies back, and you let him know you want to pick him up because there's something you need to talk to him about. What? And I don't want to give away too much because you know people we want people to see the film, but. What precipitated at this point in your life, and you're 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 uh, you're married. You have three children. Uh, I don't know if at that point uh, Derek had a child yet. Uh, no, he had not had a child yet. Okay, so you hadn't quite become a grandparent yet. That's right. Okay, so why shake things up at that point? What what was happening in your mind or in 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 in, in your life that you decided it's time? I need to do this. Well, it, you know, it, what really happened was I, I made a decision many years earlier that I was going to tell the truth. And, and I spent uh, a couple years in counseling with my spouse, Pat, 
you know, um, to get her ready. And then uh, I was ready to tell the children. Um, and I was also uh, in counseling at the time. I, in 2010, I began to see a transgender counselor to prepare myself. Uh, and one of the, what, the first thing the transgender counselor asked me is, you know, what's your goal? And I said, well, my goal is to be as strong as a woman as I am as a man. You know, as a man, I'm a confident leader. I, 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 I feel strong. I feel capable. But as a woman, I feel full of shame. Uh, so we began work on that, and it, it, it was actually 2015 when that work culminated, and I felt strong enough. I was amazed that we were able to go that far. But, but at the so several years before I told Derek, I was actually preparing to transition. So it was all pretty much falling along this kind of long timeline and progressing uh, at a way that that I really uh, felt most comfortable with. You know, I really. You know, I felt felt like when my heart was ready, that was time to tell. And and it and uh, I was told my I told my daughters first, and then of course once I told my daughters, the pressure was on to tell Derek because we don't like keeping family secrets. Hmm. And uh, before going any further about Derek, politically, two thousand eight, two thousand sixteen, the Obama administration made a lot of uh, prog helped make a lot of progress for people who were different in terms of their gender uh, or, or, or sexuality, whether they be, whether they were gay or, 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 or lesbian or trans or, or, or bisexual. Uh, there were a lot more freedoms or a lot more protections during that period. Politically, did you feel that it was a safer time to transition than you might have under uh, the previous eight years with President Bush or the current under President Trump? Yeah, you know, I, I, so this kind of gets into into my political history uh, because in 2008, I, I uh, canvassed hard for President Obama. I went over to New Hampshire because, of course, Vermont was going to vote for him anyway, and I uh, knocked on doors. And, you know, we got we got this uh, personal invitation. Of course, I'll reveal there were 500,000 of those personal <laughs> invitations, but it was our personal invitation to the inauguration. And uh, Pat, my spouse, Derek, and now his wife, we all went down to Washington and I really felt at that time that I that America was in good shape. And personally, I said, "Oh, I can I can now focus 100% on climate change. I don't need to worry about the politics because we're okay now." Um, so it, you know, I, I really felt that under the Obama administration, we were focusing on all marginalized communities. And 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 uh, you know, I had no I I just it was unimaginable that November 9th, 2016 would ever happen. I don't think, you know, like, like many folks in this country, I was totally shocked uh, when Donald Trump got elected. Hmm. But you had already come out at that point, you had made the decision, and you're, 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 you're you know, you're, you're living. Yeah, my, you, yeah my, fate, my fate had been sealed, that's right, for sure. Right, and, and a lot of people, I'm sure, and the reason I yeah. ask is I'm thinking there were probably a lot of people who, suddenly felt like, you know what, now's the time. It's who, who I am in my mind, who I am inside. It seems there's been no safer time to come out and be that person. I agree. Yeah. Yes. All right. So all right, now let's come back to Derek. So uh, you've told, so your wife has known for some time. Yeah, she discovered about six years into the marriage, uh, you know, it's what, I always has I always had a stash of women's clothes, um, you know. I, I actually ever since I was like in fourth grade, I had a stash of women's clothes. Now I I would about six times prior I had thrown the clothes away and tried to be, you know, tried to forget about it. But they'd always creep back in. So finally, when I was forty four years old, I said this cost me too much money to throw the clothes away. So <laughs> so anyway, she discovered a stash of clothes about six years into the marriage. She asked me about it, and we were kind of, you know, I explained to her. At the time, I didn't know what transgender was. I didn't discover that till later on. Well, but, you know, I explained what this was, and she was like, well, hey, you know, whatever floats your boat, just, you know, don't do it around me. And, uh, you know, we were going to take this secret to our grave. And uh, at, at some point, she brings out uh, Halloween pictures and shows a picture of you during Halloween, at particular Halloween. I'm not exactly sure. Were you the good witch of, of the of Yeah, I was the, the good East? witch. I was Glinda. Glinda, okay. Good witch. That's what yeah, I, that, was my, that was my favorite Halloween, that's for sure. Well, she, she certainly saw that, and you could see it in your face in the picture. Um, oh, my God. It was, it, I should point it just for laughs. You know, our, 
pretty conservative town and I was walking around town, you know, saying hello to all the friends and they, they were pretty, pretty aghast. It was pretty funny. Uh, so I, I don't think anybody connected the dots at that point, but they were pretty shocked that I was, that I looked so good <laughs> and that I had pretty skilled. I, I was pretty skilled and I think I, you know, it had people scratching their heads. <laughs> now, um, Derek, and, and, and I give him credit. He captures on film you telling him or you and, and and him finding out and that he did not react well to this. Yes, I did not. You should know that I never knew that he didn't react well till the movie came out because that's, you know, he had told me about this trip he was going to make. Uh, and it was a one year gig in China where he would come every month. I thought he was pretty excited about it. But then, of course, you know, three months into it, he gave up the gig and I was really confused. But I did not know at the time he was struggling with it because he never told me that he he was always very supportive. Um, and I and I think, you know, when I look at Derek's reaction, I think that happened with a lot of folks. They you know, people are going to tell you they're supportive. But meanwhile, they're struggling with it as well. Yeah. And at some point. So Derek, then he talks to you about, you know, basically why what's what on earth is going on. And he also talks to Pat about it. And. Uh, I, I, in, in some ways, Pat's explanation and, and description is almost more interesting than yours. Oh, yeah. Because, um, you know, you talked about uh, that you knew as early as first grade. You, I think you, you say that you, you smelled a girl, a girl was wearing perfume and you, it, 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 it flipped a switch in your head. You, you suddenly realized something about yourself. Yes, I... I wanted to know where she got the perfume. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, so if, if Derek is having a hard time uh, with your transition, so he goes to talk to his mom and okay, you know, you sort of, and this is one of those things where I'm watching sort of out of the corner of my eye and then uh, wait, she said, what? So um, he, he asked pa Pat, well, why did you marry him? You know, and, and, and Pat says something that no child wants to hear out of their parent. <laughs> he was a great lover. I'm sorry. It's like that record scratch moment. You know, Arr! it's like, what? What did you just say to your son? <laughs> and then she repeated it. And he's and he says, uh, and he's like, I don't I don't want to hear that. And he gets up and he walks away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was uh, that was. Well, you should know that was uh, that's the other thing I learned in the movie. Uh, what? You just married me for sex? <laughs> so I mean, it was it, it was eye opening for everybody. Um, but you 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 also you talk about two other points in your life where you might have come out, uh, uh, fifteen and twenty. Can you explain why you didn't at that point? Well, you know, the first time actually it was it was uh, I was like age eleven when I got my mom to dress me up as a little ball peep, and I said to my mom you know, I wanted to be a girl. And she told me never say that again. And of course, you know, I was close with my mom and dad. And when your mom tells you that in that, okay, I, I get it. Just her tone of her voice was like, I guess I will never tell anybody again. But then, it, you know, I later on find out they put people in mental institutions at that time for having gender dysphoria. So I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why mom said that. And, and then of course, later on, you know, later on, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was basically, the same thing. It's like, you know, where do you go with this? Well, I'll just, you know, when I, I had another struggle at about age 20. Uh, uh, and at, actually at the time I was considering taking a job in New York City with, with, uh, with, uh, with theaters, um, doing the technical part of theaters. But I, but I decided not to. So, so then you make those decisions and you, and you lead your life. Um, and you also say, I think that at 20, uh, that if, if you had, uh, come out at 20 that you would have never married Pat. You would have never had, had your three children. And I get the, I get the, the strong sense from the film that uh, you would not have wanted life to turn out that way. You, you were proud. Oh, of yeah. No, I, I, I love my children. Um, I, you know, you look back and you say, well, what, what if I lived it differently? Well, I, I, pretty, I was basically, I'm pretty happy with life. So, so, you know, I don't, I don't see a need to, to live it differently. Um, the real 
the reason I came out with the truth was really because of my children. You know, I felt so guilty that they didn't know this most important truth about me. And, and you could see from the film, we have honest relationships. So they thought. So I couldn't go to my grave with the idea that I didn't tell them the truth. So, so all this really was for my children. Um, and and I, I think as a parent, that's what you do. Did uh, Was there any point during the filming that you thought maybe the film is the way to come out or it, it, or was that more accidental than anything? No, that was actually, again, you know, the whole thing was, uh, you know, I, I, I was doing whatever Derek wanted to do from a film standpoint. Um, and of course, you know, he had, he had some, working with some other, other producers and they basically said it's a documentary. So capture all of it. And the family agreed we would tell the truth. So I, you know, that I was not necessarily thinking about the film, that was more Derek's project. In fact, what I told Derek when he, when he, uh, er, when he made the decision to include the transgender story, I said, you know, Derek, this is your story. You know, if, if I come out as an ugly villain at the end, I'm still going to love you. I said because it's your it's your truth. Whatever your truth is, I guess I'll find out. Um, and the good news is, you know, I don't I didn't come out with, as a villain at the end. But again, you know, I love my son. I love my children. And, you know, I'm going to respect their truth. And I have to ask, did did you have any say in the final cut of the film? Did he give you the no. opportunity to? No, really. I, did, I didn't want it. I told him uh, when I saw it, the first time I saw it, uh, it, it was, uh, well, it, there, was a, there was an initial premiere uh, that he did in New York City, which wasn't quite like this, the ending at all. So anyway, I saw, the, I saw an initial premiere that he did with a bunch of, uh, other documentary filmmakers to give feedback. And it was totally different than the fun finished product. But I saw the finished product at the, uh, at the LA film festival when everybody else saw it. And how did you feel when it, when it was over? It was really, really hard. It was, uh, you know, I, I, it was, it like, it was very hard to watch because not because I, I didn't realize how much of a struggle this was for me. You know, again, you could see in my face that whole thing that every day was a struggle for me. But but you don't think about it when you're in the middle of it because, you you know, you're, you're try, trying to get through every day with the best way you can. But I had no idea how much uh, this was kind of tearing me apart until I saw the movie. How did the, uh, in L.A., which is, you know, not necessarily always representative of all of America, how did how did the audience respond at the end of the film? Well, the audience responded very well. Um, you know, it was, it was a full house. You know, we were we were impressed. Um, you know, it's, people cry, people laugh. You know, I think that's the real test of the movie. And certainly after I've watched it for a while, that's what I look for now. Are people laughing in the right spot? Are they crying in the right spot? And for the most part, they do. Um, were you introduced at any point before or after? We introduced whatever. Derek, I love doing uh, uh, screenings with Derek because we uh, we we come out at the end of the movie and we get introduced and then we do questions and answers. Mm. Um, and it's and it's real enjoyable because Derek and I have the same relationship in front of the audience that we have with on the film. You know, so and I and I, you know, you look at that relationship that we have. I really uh, value it, and, I, and we have that with all of our children. It's not. They're not going to just accept what I say, and I'm not going to accept what they say. We have a, we. I think we grow through each other. So you know, we have, we continue to have a very uh, active discussions. In fact, uh, Derek was doing some of the ads during the campaign with the campaign manager, and we'd all sit down and you know bounce ideas around, and and it's uh it's 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 good having that kind of a relationship. So there is coming out, and there is out, and and you clearly with the film you are as out as anyone could possibly be. Oh yeah. There's no hiding it. <laughs> um, was it in the introduction? I, I reference what I, I think is the most famous trans woman uh, in the country. And that would be a, 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 a Jenner. Does it bother you to be mentioned in the same breath or is that, is it okay? Or, well, you know, I, I think Caitlyn Jenner, um, she certainly hasn't done the trans community much justice. Um, because, In fact, I look at Caitlin and I question, did she do the psychological work she needed to do? 
but then again, you know, she's Kardashian. So what do you expect? You know, I, you know, it's so it's I just think, you know, the fact that she supported Donald Trump, the fact that she was so focused on her looks um, and, you know, it, it just and I, and and then again, I say to myself, well, then who the hell am I to judge? You know, I, everybody does it differently. Um, but, it, you know, I it just I, I just think. I think her political position, how could you support Donald Trump, is what bothered all of us. You know, it's like kissing the ring of your oppressor. Mm -hmm. And I and I think how how could you how could you possibly support Trump if you're transgender or part of the LGBT community? A part of I think what interests me in this is that the people who do not approve of uh, the whole LGBT community uh, in any in any sense, they like to lump people together like they're all the same they they're all they're all liberal they're all this they're all that but we can see just in two of the most visible uh transgender women in our country you and and uh caitlin jenner completely different people yeah completely different before the transition and completely different after the transition transition and it kind of makes the point of people who support LGBT rights, that it, you're all not, you're, or you're all, it doesn't sound quite right, but people who are in any of these groups, they're not all the same people. They're individuals, just as all straight men are not all the same. They don't all believe the same things. They don't carry themselves the same way. Uh, gay women, they're not all the same. And it, it helps to make the point that we're still dealing with individuals, and I think that gets lost in the politics today. Yeah, in fact, you know, one of the things I said, I've said a few times, I'll say it now, is if I was the only transgender person in the world, I'd still want to be treated with respect and decency. It's not about numbers. It's about, it's about letting us be who we are. Who we are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the LGBT community sticks together because we, you know, there's power in numbers. But what I've said on the campaign trail is, you know, Vermont's taken very good care of its LGBT community. It's it's time for us to pay it forward and work on racial justice issues. Uh, so, I, you know, I think when it, any community is is marginalized, we're all in trouble. Uh, I th so, you know, people might say, you know, Donald Trump's attacking the transgender community and trying to wipe us out right now. Well, I got news for you, folks. It's not going to stop there. So, so help us out now so that you don't have to be dealing with the same situation. But it, but then again, that's very selfish, right? You know, the idea is we we all ought to be looking out for each other. Well, John John Kasich during the 2016 campaign had that classic ad that said, first they came for this group, then they came for this group, then they came for this group, and I didn't speak up, I didn't speak up, then they came for me. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, and and people just don't see that. I think maybe the midterm election in 2018 may have indicated people finally started getting it, but. Um, uh, so let's talk about campaigns. So you finished the movie, uh, and the movie, as I said before, the movie does not include the 2018 gubernatorial campaign in Vermont. You decide to run for governor of Vermont. Christine Hallquist is the is. I, I assume you had to go through a primary. You you weren't just I, yeah. It was um. So let me just tell you the, the reason for that. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, so fast forward to November 9th, 2016, I went into political depression. Uh, and then, you know, the following year, 2017, I, I went and marched in Washington at the Women's March, the Clown March. I did a lot of marching in Vermont. But once again, I was in denial. I, I said, Vermont's, you know, this wonderful state. We're going to be protected from all this negative stuff coming out of Washington. But in late 2017, we started to see white supremacist activity in Vermont. We hadn't seen that since the early 80s. And on January 20th of this year, 2018, I was down in Montpelier, our capital. I was at the Youth March, and I was listening to four young women. Uh, they were high school seniors. They called themselves Muslim Girls Making Change. And they were doing slam poetry about the harassment they faced in Vermont. And I cried. And that's when I made the irrational decision to run for governor. So, so now you should know that, you know, I, I knew at the time it was an irrational decision. So, so I called the uh, head of the Democratic Party, who I really didn't know, and I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Well, the next day, 
um, they they met with me and said, look, you know, if, if you if you run, you know, we'll support you because we think you've got a good name and a good rec. I didn't have great name recognition, but I had a, you know, I was known for climate change and the work I had done. Well, then I I did a kind of a, uh, a you know a trial balloon floated out to the press, and the, the, it was it was all mayhem. After that, you know, and and it was mayhem right up till last week. Wow. You know, it's, it's been just crazy ever since. So it really like once I got the word out that the train had left the station and I was on it, you know, whether I wanted to or not, you know, and, and, and I, you know, you should know when I left my job March 2nd of this year and the first nine days I got up on the edge of the bed and say, what the heck have I done for every morning? <laughs> but after, you know, after nine days, it, it, I really got excited. And I'm telling you, even though we didn't win, uh, it was a very historic election. We had a record number of votes for an off-year election. Um, we really energized people. Get the, the, tur- the turnout was incredible. Uh, unfortunately for us, the Republicans turned out as much as the Democrats. Mm-hmm. I was hoping the Republicans would stay home, but but I have no regrets. It's, it's such it, it was such an incredible learning experience. Uh, so much excitement. But you know, then again, I gave up my good job and and my retirement. So now I have to decide what to do next. You gave up, wait a minute, you gave up your retirement. You would still get a pension from all the years that you worked though, right? Well, yeah, but it's, but it's one of these things, you know, I, I had a four, I was living on my 401k for the past year. I do have to like get back to work and, and figure out how to get some revenue. But, but yeah, I, you know, there is some, there is some pension, but the point is, you know, I had planned on working another seven years and building up this great retirement plan. But, you know, the way I look at it, Thousands of people before me died for freedom. The least I can do is give up a good job and, and a retirement plan. So what were, say, one or two of the highlights of the campaign and one or two of the lowlights of the campaign? Well, the high, of course, the highlight was winning the primary. It was it was insane how much we won the primary. You know, that the politicals were saying when I got into the race, there was, there was you know, Christine doesn't have a chance. Not She's late into the game. Not, not big name recognition. It's going to be a ho-hum year. Not going to be a big turnout. Well, two and a half times the number of people turned out, and we won with a with a great margin in the primary. Um, and you know, two weeks before the pr- the primary, that's when things started to take off. We started to get contacted by, you know, all the major news outlets, uh, you know, including foreign outlets, including uh, you know, um, uh, all 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 the uh, English television channels, and 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 there were there were national correspondents coming over. So we, you know, the, the primary night was 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 uh, something I I was not prepared for at all, but then you know, in the next twenty four hours we we heard from a, a Washington media firm that twenty four hours after the primary there were three thousand different news stories worldwide and reaching an audience of four billion, they never saw anything like it before, so that so that it was crazy chaos the first couple days after the primary. So that was clearly a highlight. Um, and what would be another highlight? I guess uh, um, I guess another highlight was uh, probably my first uh, my first debate with our current governor because I had so much fun. <laughs> you know, I I I really love debates. I, you know, I was never big on sports, but but debating is kind of uh, boxing for nerds. It was really fun. Um, but now the lowlights. Um, well, you know, the first, the first se- several months was definitely lo- every day was a low light. It was, you'd get up in the morning, I'd, I'd be, you know, I'd do this call time. I'd call everybody, call everybody. We weren't bringing much money in. You know, you really was at the beginning. Is, is this even, you know, this is insane. Why did I do this? So, you know, every day was hard in the beginning. Um, and I would say, uh, you know, another another low part was was seeing our first poll come in and realizing, well, maybe the polls. You know, you get you get a poll that says you're not gonna you're not gonna do what you think you're gonna do. Well, the first thing you do is deny the poll, mm-hmm. but obviously the poll is right. Did did your in retrospect, do you feel that your opponent, the Republican incumbent, did he treat you with respect? Oh yes, we. You know, the Republican. You know, Phil Scott, our governor, he, you know, I, he, you know, his, he's a, he's a classic Republican, but he, but he presents himself well. 
Because, you know, if you look at the bills he vetoed, you know, he talked about affordability, but he vetoed a bill that would have raised the minimum wage. He vetoed a bill that would have given family leave. He vetoed a bill that would have prevent, uh, to- you know, protected our children from toxics and toys. And he vetoed a bill that would have made polluters pay. So he's a classic Republican. He's all about, you know, he talks about, he talks a good game, but the reality is it's not about, it's not about the l- people on the lower income ladder at all. Um, so, but, but he's very respectful and very decent. I mean, the real issue for us was we didn't take corporate contributions. And of course, he got contributions from places like Monsanto, Purdue Pharma, the, the opiate manufacturers. And, he, and a t- the Republican Governors Association pumped a ton of money into his campaign and ran really negative ads, lies, basically lies and dishonesty about me. Um, but, you know, his position was that's the, I called him on the debate. He said, well, that's the RGA. I'm like, Phil, if you can't control the RGA, how how do you expect people like me to to think you're going to protect us from Donald Trump? You know, it's like, and so you know, it's it it, it was it was a dirty campaign, but it but it came from the Republican Governors Association. I, I was just going to explain for people who didn't know that the RGA was that. So thank you for that. Uh, so, yeah. and it's astonishing that you came away from that with almost forty percent. I mean fractionally less than 40% of the vote on a night when nationwide uh, uh, l- lesbian women won seats in Congress. Eventually, we had Kirsten Cinema in Arizona, who not only was a Democrat winning the Senate seat, but a bi- a, a, an acknowledged bisexual. I mean, it, it was like, if, if those things happened that night, who couldn't believe that you could possibly have won the governor's race, right? I mean... Right. Yeah. yeah, and then the other thing, of course, Vermont hasn't thrown out an incumbent governor since 1962. So that was the other point. You know, Vermonters typically, first-term governors, they, they let them serve two terms. So that's another thing. We were up against that as well. Hmm. Well, so as we, we'll kind of wind, wind down here, I, I, I am curious... Uh, uh, where where things stand uh, with obviously you're very involved with Derek. You've got the movie going on. You've stayed very involved. Um, how how are your your daughters through this? And and, I, and if it's none of my business, please say so. But where is Pat today? Well, Pat and I, you know, so first of all, the the, the campaign was awesome because the whole family jumped in and supported. You know, I think it really pulled us together for a common cause. But you know, Pat and I, we were the movie ends. It says we were we we are separated, but we were separated for eight months, and we had dinner with each other three or four nights a week. Finally, we said, "Why are we paying for two places? Let's be five star roommates." You know, we're we uh we you know we we've, we've been married thirty eight years. You know, we've known each other for forty years. It's hard to, and we like each other. So now, of course, you know, I recognize that she didn't marry the person she, that I'm sitting in front of you, you all right now, but we, but we do love each other and support each other. And, you know, I, I don't know where that's going to end up. Um, you know, I just want Pat to be happy. Um, uh, and I'll, you know, I'll do whatever I need to, to support her happiness. That's, that's very nice. I, I'm glad to hear that because it, it was kind of left as kind of an open question at the end of the film. I, I wondered where that was. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, so uh, it sounds like what's next for you is uh, finding a job, getting back out in the corporate world, I guess. Well, yeah, but I, you should know I'm toying. One of the things I've, I've, I'm toying with and I'm going to work on is, I, you know, I still want to lead the North American solution for climate change. You know, I, I, I know how to, we know how to solve climate change. And so I'm going to actually start, you know, talking to folks, uh, different um, you know, t- across the country about, hey, let's let's solve climate change. Let's not wait for the federal government. Um, I've already met with a Canadian delegation. Um, and I met with a former governor of Colorado who's got uh, 19 governors signed out to an accord. Um, so I think, you know, I, you know, I, I I'm, I'm going to take that on. Excellent. Um, well, listen, folks, you can find uh, Derek Hallquist's new documentary, Denial, starring Christine Hallquist, uh, via the video-on-demand service Reverie. You can go to reverie.tv, it's, and it's R-E-V-R-Y dot TV, and watch Denial. Now, uh, Christine, is there uh, 
uh, is there a website? Are you in social media at all? Can people reach out yeah, to you, you in can some follow, way? Yeah, they could just look, just, uh, you know, they, on Facebook, it's Christine Hulquist. You'll find me there. Um, I've continued, I'm going to continue to keep the website, Christine for Vermont, dot com open um uh, on twitter it's christine for vt christine for v- vermont um so yeah I'll, I'll continue to uh you know search for me on twitter search for me on instagram you'll find me um yep so wait i have to ask if you're keeping those uh those social media alive does that mean there might be another run in four years there might be in two years two years Senate? Uh, well, it could could be. Governor comes up again, too. So, All yeah, right. I'm, keep, I'm keeping the options open. Fascinating. Well, uh, Christine Hulquist, it was fascinating to watch the film. Delightful to meet you today. Just a, an, an amazing life. Um, do you, and I should ask before we go, any advice for um, uh, men and women who find themselves in your situation? They're thinking about coming out. They've been kind of living this other life or... They, they feel that they're, what would you say to them? I'd say, get help, get professional help. Don't do it on your own. I don't know how I could have pulled this off without a transgender counselor, but at least talk to others, start talking. Um, I, you know, I, I had a lot of support with my transition. You know, the, I, the, the Pride Center of Vermont was a great supporters. You know, I had a lot, a lot of help, you know, and, and the point that I would make to everybody is, look, we need all the help we can get. You know, go seek it out. You're, you won't be disappointed, but don't do it on your own. Great. Uh, Christine Hulquist, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Believer, a bad idea to believe her.